Hello, I'm Rithian, and this is Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn. This video is sponsored by Square Enix, and is meant to be a bit of a beginner's guide to show you how to get your start in the land of Eorzea. We're going to start off right at the very beginning, at the character creation screen. I'm going to create two different characters, with two different playstyles, and two different introductions, and two different starting areas. From there on out, we will feel how the combat works, get a feel for the class, before later on, in a future video, we can move on to leveling up, and try out different sort of group content. Let's go. And here we are, the character creation screen with a beautiful classic Final Fantasy theme playing in the background. At the start, you can see we have six different races to pick from, two genders, and an option to see them in a different environment or in a different attire. Obviously, race is pretty important, but mostly you can be any class and whatsoever with any race. So, we have a choice here between the higher, which is, I suppose, humans, the Elizen, which would, I guess, be elves, if you want to think of that way. The cutest things ever, which are the Lalafell. Yay! I do like the Lalafell, they're very cool. The Bakote are your cat people of choice. Girl, cat, boy, cat. Rogadin, aka Giants. I like them. Remind me of Gol Goliaths. Pretty cool. And the Aura, which I guess they have horns. So, you know, a little bit of a different style to them. Um, I think I'm going to go for an Elizen to start up with, a uh, male Elizen. And the story behind the Elizen is the following. Nomadic people believe the realm are theirs by divine right. And then the appearance of the higher made it an invasion, long history of conflict. Not so good. We do eventually have to choose between two different clans, which we'll get to eventually. The Wildwood and the Duskwhite. Basically, wood elves or dark elves, I guess you can call them. Now, you can have different uh, poses and stuff. You want to see more of animations. They get to do random animations. So you get to get a feel of how they look like. You can also different backgrounds if you don't want to stand in this celestial plane of whatever. You can see a forest. You can see this... Well, what is it called? Black Shroud. The desert area of Thanalan. And inside, the Gradanian Residence. Similarly, we can, well, we can actually adjust the time of day. But what we can do is take off all our clothes. You know, because why not? You know, that's always something. Uh, once we actually select our job, we can see how we look at different um, outfits or that sort of thing. So let's do that. Hmm. Now we get to decide the clan. Wildwood is the forest people. You can see we have a little bit of different starting attributes. You can see why Duskwhite has one more strength and a little bit less dexterity and so on. I'd say for the most part you shouldn't worry too much about the gameplay mechanics of this sort of thing and just go with what you think looks good and feels the best. You can be a perfectly fine whatever job you want to be with whatever race. We're doing a little bit of a jig. I think we're gonna go for Duskwhite though. We sought out a life of peace and seclusion in the depths of Eorzea's caves and caverns and we are called the Duskwhites, though the Wildwood Cousins say home simply as the Greys. So this is what we're going to go for, a Duskwhite Ellison male. Finally, this is where the difficulty comes in, like trying to decide exactly how you want to look. Maybe we want to be mega tall, well over two feet. I mean, we're very tall either way. The lowest we can get is um, 194. Also, I realized I just said two feet when I meant two meters, but there you go. Imperial versus metric, etc. Yeah, I'm going to go for two meters even. We can get it to two oh no. We can get at one zero point one centimeter away. That'll have to do. And also change our skin color. So you can see we have uh, basically limitations to how exactly we can look. It's all along the same same scale. Let's go for actually this one we have right now isn't too bad. A whole bunch of hairstyles. If you can stop yawning, we can get a better style of your hair. We need to make it very Final Fantasy, of course. That was that's very Final Fantasy. This one is a little also pretty Final Fantasy-ish. Actually, that one's not too bad. Hair color. Now we're starting to have a lot more choices in color. We can go pure white, a little bit darker, blue or purple. I don't know. I'm colorblind. I think we're gonna go with 
this. This looks pretty good. We have a couple of... Okay, that one I'm not so fond of. He looks way too young. I think I'm going to stick with that one. More choices for jaws. Eye shapes, iris size, eye color, eyebrow. You have a lot of options to decide to make your character look whatever you want to do. Voices now. This could be important. I think we go with type 4. I haven't even heard left one, but let's stick with that one. We're not going to go with any tattoos or face paint. Everything else seems about the same. I think we're good for the appearance right now. Save appearance data? Sure, why not? And save one. Dusk White Male. Let's call him Dusk White Male 1. That is a particularly fantastic and creative name. That's if you want to reuse it in the future. Now, for the calendar, there's not that much important stuff. So how about we just pick the sixth astral boon, because it sounds good, and then we'll go 16. That'll be good enough. Now, this one is what deity you sort of are connected to. Not necessarily worship, if you don't want to be a uh, divine type of character. But it does give you slightly different elemental attributes. As you can see, the differences are incredibly minor. Um, I like uh, Halon because she is the Fury, I believe. Um, the other ones I are... I don't mind too bad, actually. There's, there's the Underworld and the God of Commerce. The Keeper of the Sun. The Breaker of Worlds. The God of Destruction. The Watcher of Celestial Bodies and the Goddess of Fate. Goddess of Fate sounds pretty cool. God of Knowledge, Goddess of Love, Goddess of War. Let's go with the Goddess of War. Let's go with Alone. And that gives us slightly less... Is that fire? And slightly more freezing. Which is fine, I suppose. Hmm. Now, here's the real question. Now, you can decide to be your uh, class or job, I suppose it's called here in the very beginning. And while that is an important choice, mainly it uh, informs how you start the game and what you do, and also what zone you start in, don't worry too much. You're not entirely locked to this because the way Final Fantasy XIV goes, you can eventually switch your class with the same characters, which is really cool. It sort of diminished the need for an entirely new alt and so on. So let's click job as our attire and start getting a look at exactly what we will look at when we get cool. Gladiator is the straight up one-handed blade and shield. Uh, generally, we will be tanks if we are Gladiator. This is my main character that I've been playing in the game so far. I want to try out something else for this one, though. We have an option to be a pugilist, which is unarmed hand-to-hand -hand combat. Kind of a monk-style thing. Gradually, all of these classes will eventually evolve into something more. For example, the Gladiator become a paladin, and the Lancer can become a dragoon, and so on and so on. Uh, Marauder is more of a Great Axe Berserker type fighting. Lancer is very cool, and was what I've been looking at. You use long 200 pole arms and spears using a barrage of thrusting attacks. They are however trained with a number of weapons, giving a diversity to their attacks that makes them extremely versatile combatants. Combatants, I suppose it's called. I think this is what we're going to go for for this one. A uh, male Ellison Lancer. I think this is a good start. Let's uh, put him against the ethereal background. And I think the outfit looks pretty badass. Of course, that's, this is what we'll look at when we start. Not quite as badass, but still. Let's go. And of course, the toughest decision, what to name them. You do get to decide both forename and surname this time around. We're going to go with something a bit... All right, that'll have to do. We have finished Saileth Windsong. The Black Shroud, the ancient forest close to the heart of Eorzea. 
Beneath the boughs of its towering trees lies the woodland city-state of Gridania. Once a sanctuary from the world beyond the hedge, even the mighty elementals, eternal guardians of the forest, could not forestall the coming of the Seventh Umbral Era. However, the goddess Nofika was never one to forsake her children, and today she welcomes another brave soul. One who may yet play a telling role in the tale of this great realm. I've skipped some of the introductory cutscenes because I think that's something you should see yourself when you make your own character. But all in all, we are a new adventurer on the scene and it's time to explore Gordania and learn how to fight as a Lancer. After meeting some of the earlier NPCs that show us around and tell us where to go, we make our way to the Guildmaster over here. His name is Uwain. Well met, adventurer. None can claim to be as offensively minded as ours. Our approach is ever one of attack, no matter who or what we face. Well, it sounds pretty cool to me. Have you the resolve to wield the lance? Yes. We have our first proper fighting quest. It is called Way of the Lancer, and it is basically kill a bunch of the dudes outside. Let's open up the map and see if we can find a path to that quest exactly. Um, possibly south? Central Shroud, maybe? There we go. The Central Shroud. As you can see, as we go closer to these places, we see that we have these targets for a quest. The Way of Lancer. So, let's have some combat. At the moment, we only have one skill. True Thrust. So that's what we're going to do. You can see where the enemy is aiming. You can see where we're aiming, what we're targeting. Of course, the very first people we fight are not particularly difficult to fight. The spell costs 70 TP, we restore a lot of them as we fight, and it has a cooldown of uh, two and a half second, or recast as it says. Do that, or proper fighting music. This is the very basic of the first fight. And already, we have leveled up. We gained Faint, which delivers an attack with a potency of 120. As you can see, it's not quite as strong as the first one. But what it does do is that it slows the enemy for 10 seconds. You will eventually unlock more abilities as you keep on doing this. Until eventually your action bar is full of all kinds of possible options for you to use. You have a couple of your main rotational abilities. That will be the core of your combat experience. 
all, these level 1 enemies aren't particularly difficult when it comes to fighting them. In fact, we just really just walk up there and press the button a lot. Eventually, you will start to have to deal with avoiding their attacks. But we have some forest fung worst kill. Bigger than it looked. Down it goes. Two left. I'm mostly moving around because it looks cooler. At this point, we are pretty safe just to stand here and attack. This will be the last one. You might notice we have a thing called Chain Bonus. Which means that the more we continue clearing enemies with the Chain Bonus ex uh, active, we get more experience. And after we've almost leveled up, there we go, we level up. Fittingly, we've hit level 3 as we killed 3 of 3 enemies, and we're now going to go return to the Lancer. Guildmaster. Ewain. Let's sprint. And we're back, and we're having a chat with Ewain. We did really well. Kill a whole bunch of forest animals. The next quest will be available upon reaching level 5. Hooray! We get some experience. That's it for the Lancer for now, but we still have one more class I want to check out before we finish this video, so let's go make a Thaumaturge. Here we are again, at the character creation screen. This time I'm gonna make a little Lalafell. Cute little dude, cute little guy. And we're gonna go straight for confirm. Get to choose between Plainsfolk or Dunesfolk. I'm gonna be Plainsfolk from the flat landscapes, from the home island, that's where we are. Uh, gonna go pretty much with the default appearance for now, to save time. Uh, we gotta always make ourselves as tiny as possible. I'm gonna stay at Ah, uh, we can't quite get to 99.99. Like, I want it to be half the size of my other character. Let's go to 89.9. That'll have to do. Otherwise, I'm gonna go with the standard setup, so you can just go straight into it. We'll look at, uh, pretty much a default. Uh, we're not gonna bother saving this one. And how about we're born on the 6th Astral Moon? We could be born on the same day. Why not? Why not? Uh, however, this time I think we should pick a different deity. Um, what can we go for? The Goddess of Knowledge, Thaliac, ruler of rivers and wisdom. Let's do it. Now, as for the job, we went over the Disciple of War a little bit earlier. Uh, we are not going to be a Disciple of War this time, we're going to be a Disciple of Magic. We have three different options, Conjurer, Arcanist, and Thaumaturge. Conjurer is more of a um, healer, eventually. Uh, Arcanist can become a scholar or a summoner. Uh, Thaumaturge is a black mage. In the hands of a skilled practitioner, Thaumaturge can be a force of terrifying destruction. That sounds like something for me. As you can see, we start in the world of Ulda as opposed to Gridania, so we're gonna have a little bit of a different style. But what are we gonna look like when we get cool? We're gonna look pretty cool, am I right? That's pretty cool. Let's do it. Again, not great with the names at the moment, so we're gonna have to stick with this. But we're good to go. Look, look how happy he is. How can you not be happy? Here we are. The Thaumaturge is killed. Coco Bigo, let's have a chat. <laughs> 
Did your mother never tell you not to start La Thaumaturge? No, she didn't. Look at that expectant face, Kokobigo. This gentleman is obviously a new applicant for the guild, seeking audience with our eldest brother. <laughs> it is our sibling Kokobuki with whom you should speak. They have a lot of interesting names here. There we go! The wisest of the five masters of the Thaumaturge's guild. To wield thaumaturgy is to unleash devastation of the highest magnitude. The lethal force of our spells far exceeds the destructive capability of any other form of arcane manipulation. Fire, lightning, blizzards, somnolence, somnolence, somnolence. What somnolence, guys? I don't know. Don't. We'll pretend. We'll pretend we know what it is. Open your mind to sorcerer's teachings, and you too shall soon hold the unparalleled power of our discipline in the palm of your hand. Are you prepared to leap into the abyss of pursuit of power unrivaled? Yep, I'm prepared. Like the Lancer quest, we now have to go and kill a whole bunch of small little animals to prove our worth, somehow. And so we're at Central Thanalan, where we can do the very first quest as Thaumaturge. There's a whole bunch of them out here, and we can kill these huge hornets with the terrifying power of our blizzard spell. Looks very fancy. See that is a little bit different in how it was as a lancer. We want to attack as far as possible, far away as possible, so that we have a couple attacks before it even gets close to hit us. We also have a casting time for our blizzard spell, more so than just waiting for it to be able to be recast again. Each spell has a certain MP cost, but as you can see, we regen it pretty quickly. So at the moment, we can pretty much do what we want. Obviously, at low levels, stuff like this doesn't really have much of a visible difference than the others, but once you get higher up, playstyle comes very different than it is for a melee character. We now have a different effect here. We have a fire spell, which grants astral fire or remove umbral eyes. Similarly, the other one. This is a bit of a different style. This is Umbral Ice and Astral Fire, which are special status effects, which allow the Thaumaturge to continuously deal devastating amounts of damage while still conserving their MP reserves. The way it works is that casting a fire spell gives us Astral Fire, which basically makes us uh, more powerful and also casts, uh, increases the MP cost of our fire spells. At the same time, it lowers the potency of Blizzard spells. What that means is basically we alternate the two as much as we go, and then eventually we stack up more of the effects and figuring out when is the best time to swap and when is the best time to keep stacking. For example, if we want to do, continue doing lots of damage, we keep casting fire. You see it now costs 26 mana, while Blizzard only casts only cost two. So our fire spells are going to be doing a lot more damage. This is about 30. While Blizzard... Only does 18, but as we keep casting it, it goes up in both damage and enemy cost. Generally what you want to do then is continue to cast fire as long as you can, since it seems to do quite a lot more damage, until you run out of mana, at which point you start casting Blizzard. I suppose it'll continue in this sort of style. Either way, we should be hunting down some snapping shrews. In a way, it turns our blizzard into a sort of control system. And as we level to level 3, the mana costs starts shifting as well. And that does our damage, of course. We have one snapping shrew left, and that's now dead. So cheerfully, we can return home and tell the Choco Brothers 
that we are the best. Hello, Guildmaster. You have the satisfied look of a mage who has utterly vanquished his foes. That's me. And we are now formally welcomed into the Brotherhood of Thaumaturges. Yes. And we are on our way to become the greatest mage in all of Eorzea. But that is it for the Thaumaturge, and previously that was it for the Lancer. If you want to find out more, keep watching for the next video, which will show you a little bit more of how we exactly level up from this point on. And later on, I will show you a little bit more about group content. Thank you very much for watching, and don't forget to join our selfie competition. Details are in the description. Thanks for watching, everyone. And until next time... Goodbye.